Hey there, my friend, it's Dr. A from the Fit Father Project and the Fit Mother Project. Welcome to today's video. In today's video, we're gonna cover six exercises that I recommend you do more of in 2023. No matter what your workout split is, no matter how frequently you train, these are exercises that I believe you can add into your routine easily that will benefit your health, how good your body moves and feels, your performance, whether you wanna lose weight, build muscle, or just stay healthy long-term. So we're gonna get into these exercises that we're actually gonna do a little bit of a quick demo as I talk through them. And I'm also gonna give you some ideas on some strength standards, like how much weight to do, how many reps for certain of these, as well as a couple cool stretches you can incorporate with these exercises to help you feel great. Let's dive into today's video. Fitfatherproject.com. All right, so the first exercise I recommend you do more of in 2023 is the strict push-up. And push-ups are such an underrated exercise. We all discard them because they seem so basic, yet they're one of the most effective exercises for both working your upper body, all your pressing motions, your chest, your shoulders, your triceps, but the cool thing is it's actually almost in a plank position so it integrates your core. And so when I say a strict push-up, I mean that you're in good push-up position and you're really tightening your core and your glutes. You're getting more of a full body activation. You lower yourself down slowly, you pause, and you press explosively on the way up. And what I recommend you do if you're just starting out and you can't do any push-ups, you can certainly start from your knees, but still practice creating that kind of tension until your arms and your shoulders get strong enough. And I recommend you do them every single day. No matter what your training split is, get them in. Maybe in the morning or right before you go to bed. And the goal would be to work up to the point where you can do a set of 10 push-ups and then a set of 20 push-ups and then a set of 30. And if you're much more advanced in your training, you can get up to a point where you can do a set of 40 or 50 push-ups. And that is 100% possible, even if right now you can't do very many push-ups. And I'll tell you this, when you can get to the point where you can do 20 push-ups in a row, 30, 40, you're gonna be so much stronger. You're gonna be so much more integrated. And this is an exercise you can do for the rest of your life. Maybe you don't have access to weights, but you can always do some strict full range of motion push-ups. Now, the second work exercise I recommend you do is also a basic exercise. It's the equivalent for the lower body, and that's a full range of motion squat. And I specifically mean full range of motion, where when you descend into the squat, you're actually getting into a deep squat to the point where you're actually at the very bottom of the squat, allowing yourself to kind of relax at the bottom and then come all the way up, work that full range of motion. And what we've le really learned, particularly from modern sports science, is to have healthy knees and to have healthy hip flexors and healthy back, you wanna be strong in that full motion. A lot of people stop too shallow on their squats. And I understand you may have a unique situation with your knees and your low back, so it's something you might wanna work into. And specifically, just like the push-ups, it's good to start off with a set of 10 of these, and then a set of 20, and then a set of 30. And to the point where you do 30 of these high quality squats, you're really gonna feel a great burn in your legs. And here's my one recommendation. As you do every rep, it's more important to do quality over quantity. So as you descend down into the squat, descend slowly and feel like you're actually engaging all the muscles in your core and your glutes and really focus on those glutes as you sit down and back to the full bottom of the squat. And now here's a little bit of a bonus I have for you. It's also very beneficial if you can spend some time at the bottom of a squat, either after you've done the squats or as a separate type of exercise. These are called yoga squats or squat holds. You can see me doing one right here. And effectively in the bottom of the squat, you're hanging out down there. And what research has shown is when you're in the bottom of that squat position, you're just kind of relaxing down there for up to maybe three minutes plus. What that's gonna do is actually gently stress the connective tissue around your knee. And it actually increases the pr proliferation of the different collagen and elastin fibers. And it makes your joints healthier. And many people around the world, not certainly in the West, but in Eastern cultures, they actually sit and eat in these low squat positions. And you can see most kids when they're very young, they can get into this low squat position, pick up rocks off the ground, play with the grass. We lose that over time, but by giving our bodies this gentle stress at the bottom of the squat, we can improve our health tremendously. And to get there, it's also gonna to reveal to you any restrictions and inhibitions you may have. Certain muscles need to get stronger. Maybe you need to stress those hip flexors out. Maybe do some formal wing massage. But if you can do full range of motion squats, I think it's gonna be so beneficial. It's also a great warm up before any kind of exercise gets the heart rate pumping. The third exercise I recommend you do is a standing dumbbell shoulder press. And I love this because as we get older, we wanna maintain good posture. And one of the best things about a standing dumbbell shoulder press is you really brace your feet, you get that core strong, and you press overhead. And your hands can be in different positions. They can be out like this pressing, 
or they can be in here in a more uh, neutral palms facing each other kind of position. But the key with this exercise is not just to think of it as a shoulder exercise, think of it as a core exercise. Initiate the motion by keeping, drawing that core in, drawing your belly button in and keeping it very tight and then pressing overhead and getting long. By creating that long straight body tension like this, it's gonna be so beneficial for your overall health and your shoulder health. And you're gonna find if you have any restrictions or things need to get stronger, start light. The strength standard for this that I recommend you aim for is to be able to do 15% of your body weight for 10 to 15 reps. And you may need to work up to this. Maybe you can start with 5%. But the goal this year for you is to do 15% of your body weight for 10 to 15 reps. Maybe you can do more, but certainly aim for that. And if you can maintain that year after year as you age, it's such a good indicator that you have a strong core integrated with a strong, healthy body. And this is gonna work the plane a slightly different than the push-ups. Push-ups are a little more in this horizontal plane. This is working pressing in the vertical plane. Very, very good. Now, the next exercise I have for you that I want you to do more of in 2023 is a bent over row. Ideally with dumbbells, but you can also do them with barbells. And one of the reasons this is such good exercise is when we bend over and hinge at the hip, we're engaging the hamstrings and the glutes, which we call the posterior chain. And you're engaging that with the back. So as you're pulling the weights into your chest and you're lowering down slowly, you're integrating this whole posterior chain. And because you're using dumbbells primarily, it's so good because your arms can move in a free motion to make sure it feels good and healthy on your shoulders. And the strength standard for the bent over dumbbell row that I recommend for you is 25% of your body weight for 10 to 15 reps. And I think this is a far more effective exercise than even doing like a single arm dumbbell row that you see so many people do on a bench at the gym because you're doing both arms at once, which means your core needs to be integrated. And if you're starting to pick up a theme with these exercises, why they're so good, is they're integrating this core strength with these different motions that your body needs to be strong in. We did the pushing in the horizontal plane, this is pulling in the horizontal plane. Now, another variation of this that's very good is doing a renegade row, which is basically getting in that push-up or plank position and then rowing and then coming back down and then rowing the other arm like this. That is a powerful exercise because again, it integrates the core into the rowing motion. So bent over dumbbell rows or renegade rows, super good. The fifth exercise I want you to do more of this year is a kettlebell swing or a dumbbell swing. But basically the idea is you get that wide stance. You have the weight in between your legs like this, either holding a dumbbell in this kind of like dangling position or you have a kettlebell and you pop and you start to swing the weights up like this. And as you're doing it, you're using your glutes to fire through. We want to have strong glutes, strong hip hinging explosive motion and integrated coordinated motion with the low back as we age. And the cool thing about kettlebell swings is depending on your goals, you can tailor the amount of weight you use to be really great. So if you're just looking for general fitness and a good cardiovascular workout and more mobility, then I recommend you do high rep kettlebell swings. So for example, you could do four sets of 25 or you could do three sets of 33, but basically try to get 100 swings at your next workout. Um, you're gonna find it's very good. It's good for your grip strength. It's good for integrating the core and the coordination. And if you're really looking to push your strength and you're in a strength muscle building phase, then try some heavy low rep kettlebell swings. Try to do a set of six to eight or six to 10 and use a very heavy kettlebell. And as you do, you might have to brace a little bit to get it moving, but really pop those hips, integrate that core and get that explosive motion. These, these kettlebell swings are so overlooked. And if you're one of our program members inside our Fit Father or Fit Mother programs, you're gonna find swings as a core exercise we do because they boost your metabolism, they integrate that posterior chain, they burn a lot of calories, they're just a wonderful exercise. And the last exercise I want you to do more of in 2023 is walking outside. I want you to do more walking outside this next year than you've ever done in your entire life. And of course there's benefits like cardiovascularly to walking outside, but the main thing is it's just so good for your nervous system. We are meant to be outside, ideally getting some morning sunshine, ideally breathing through your nose. It is such a relaxing time for our nervous system. In today's day and age, there are so many ways that people get stressed out. And the benefit of walking outside is it's natural stress relief. The research is super clear. It lowers your blood pressure. It actually helps your nervous system stay in that more parasympathetic rest and digest state. And if you walk after a big meal, it actually helps you regulate your blood sugars better. And so I like to walk in the morning and ideally walk after dinner. And it's time to take a really nice brisk walk. And as much as you can walk or as little as you can walk, it'd be a five, 10 minute walk with your family and then it's good connected time. Or it can be a very long walk, like an hour long, long walk by yourself and it's good solitary time. And I want you to play around with different types of walking. As you're walking, also consider walking backwards. Very good for your knee health and your brain health as you work on different kind of coordination patterns. 
Walk on nature trails where you get some varied uh, terrain and you're not just he hitting the normal concrete or asphalt and you get some squishier terrain that's actually good for your knees and your proprioception. As we get older, we really need to activate this brain, this nervous system through mo movement and balance and getting outside is one of the most natural ways to do this. The more you can walk, that ends up having a higher quality of life and people who walk a lot tend to live longer. So walk more. In summary, strict push-ups. Full range of motion squats with those squat holds at the bottom. Standing shoulder press at 15% of your body weight, 10 to 15 reps. Rows, 25% of your body weight for 10 to 15 reps. Kettlebell or dumbbell swings, outside walking. No matter what kind of training plan you're doing, you can do this stuff. And heck, this could be your whole training plan. Maybe you only work out for 10 minutes a day, but you do one set of each of these or two sets of each of these, or you sprinkle these in as warm ups or cool downs after your whatever routine you're currently following. This will benefit your health tremendously, and I hope you found today's video valuable. If you like this, my friend, let us know and let us know some other exercises that you would have liked to include. There were some like farmer's carries that I considered including this list, list, but I wanted to keep it short enough that you'd actually really uh, enjoy this and it wouldn't be too long of a video. But let me know in the comments below if there's other exercises you love or you want our feedback on particular kind of exercises for you in your particular situation. And if you want health with your health and fitness, we have full-blown programs that lay everything out, set-by-set, rep-by-rep for both weight loss and muscle building. And we have programs for busy moms and busy dads in their 40s, 50s, 60s, and beyond. So check the links in the description. We have that as well. And we also have free workouts. We'll send straight to your email. Thank you, my friend. This is Dr. Anthony Balduzzi. I uh, hope you and wish you amazing results in this upcoming year. Do these exercises and report back, and we hope to hear from you soon.